Multiplying and dividing with fractions is a much shorter process than adding and subtracting, so we'll talk about the multiplying and dividing with fractions prior to doing any adding and subtracting work. The multiplying with fractions boils down to a two-step process. We multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together, and then secondly, reduce. Well, like we've seen before, the reducing part can be the more time-consuming part. The very quick part for us literally is that first step. Multiply straight across. So you see in this example, 2 thirds times 9 elevenths, 2 over 3 times 9 over 11. Up on top, the very first step that we've got is multiplying those numerators together. We didn't actually do the calculation, but we did multiply them, 2 times 9 and multiply the denominators together without actually doing the calculation 3 times 11. The reason why I've left it this way is because step 2 can be time consuming, I might be able to get through things at least a little bit more quickly by leaving my numerators and denominators already partly broken apart. These are already partly factored. Rather than having 2 times 9 is 18, just leave it as 2 times 9. Things are partly factored. Rather than 3 times 11 is 33, I'll leave it broken apart as 3 times 11. That's actually completely factored. So I look at things and say, is there anything on the top and the bottom that could work together to allow me to do any reducing, any slashing? So up on top I've got a 2. That doesn't work with any of my numbers on the bottom. The next number the next highest number from 2 is a 3. 3 on the bottom. 3 on the bottom works with 9 on the top. 3 goes into 3 on the bottom once. 3 goes into 9 on the top three times. Meaning that on top I have 2 times 3. On the bottom I have 1 times 11. And without any other slashing, I can go ahead and put those together to give me my final answer. The idea being, again, that I can hopefully get through my reducing work a little bit more quickly by having things already partly factored in both the top and the bottom. So in that next example, 25 twelfths times 8 thirds, 25 over 12 times 8 over 3. Literally my first step, multiply straight across, is most easily done by writing 25 times 8 over top of 12 times 3. There we go, first step is done. Second step, reduce, means that I would want to try to find anything that goes into both a number on top and a number on the bottom and eventually gets me to the smallest possible numerator and denominator combo that I can come up with. So to be orderly about it, I'm going to start with the smallest number that I see, which is a 3. It's on the bottom. So I ask myself, will 3 go into anything that's on the top? No, it will not. The next smallest number is 8. Well, the 8's on the top, so will 8 go into anything that's on the bottom? No, it will not. But 8 can be broken apart. Because 8 can be broken apart, then there are a couple other things that I would want to check. 8 can be broken apart as 2 times 4. Well, I want to try to slash out as much as possible, so let's try the 4. 4 goes into 8 on top, yes. 4 goes into 12 on the bottom, yes. So we can go ahead and write things out in that respect. And I'll do so in this separate step here. 4 goes into 8 two times. 4 goes into 12 three times. So what we're looking at is on top 25 times a 2. And on the bottom of our fraction, we are looking at a 3 times a 3. Is there anything else on the top and the bottom that I can work with to eventually slash something out? Well, we already said that we can't use the 3 in black. So if I can't use that one, I can't use the 3 that I've just created in red either. So there is nothing else that I can slash out on the bottom. 
with something else on the top, I can go ahead and put that stuff together to give me my final answer, 50 over 9. Because for the time being, we are working only with fraction answers. This is a fraction answer. It has one number on top of a fraction bar. It has one number on the bottom of a fraction bar. It is completely reduced, fully simplified, in lowest terms, however you want to phrase it. This is our final fraction answer. And you say, hey, wait a minute. Okay, but isn't there another version that we could give? Well, maybe. Depends on our directions. If our directions tell us that we have to have a fraction answer, then this is all she wrote. If our directions don't tell us that we have to have a specific kind of answer, then yes, there is another possibility we call a mixed number. We're going to have a separate video about that. So, for right now, only keeping with fraction answers. The division stuff is also relatively quick to deal with in terms of describing the steps that we are going to work. We can take a division problem and we can turn it into a multiplication problem. If we do something very specific, we're going to rewrite that division as multiplication by the reciprocal. It's a fancy way of saying that what we would want to do is we would want to, and let's bust out some color for emphasis, we would want to keep our first fraction the same. We would want to change the division in the middle to multiplication. And we would want to take the second fraction that we see and do the reciprocal, which means that we would want to flip it upside down. So we can talk about dividing fractions in a very quick and direct way by saying keep change flip. Keep the first fraction, change the division to multiplication, flip the second fraction. Then we've got multiplication. Well, shoot, we just said multiplying up there at the top still. Multiply straight across and reduce. Multiply and simplify. So, first example here is actually worked out. Two-thirds divided by two-ninths, two over three divided by two over nine. Keep, change, flip. Keep the first fraction. Change the division in the middle to multiplication. Take the second fraction, flip it upside down. Multiply straight across. Up on top, two times nine, down on the bottom, three times two. Then, Simplify, aka reduce. See if there's anything that we can slash out on the top and on the bottom. Well, very directly, as you see in orange, there's a two on top and a two on the bottom. Two goes into two once, two goes into two once. Also, on the top and the bottom, we have numbers that will work with one another. Three goes into three once, three goes into nine three times. So we're left with a one times three on top, one times one on the bottom. Three over one, long and unnecessary. We don't need that. We can go ahead and ditch the fraction bar and the denominator and just give a whole number answer of one. This could also be used in the other direction. There may be times where you need to take a whole number and write it as a fraction. So you just take that whole number and put it over top of a one. If you need to use that fact, you may. So let's look at a couple of examples here. Start out with 18 fifths divided by 2. 18 over 5 divided by 2. Well, we have an issue here. We do not have a second fraction. We have a whole number. So, in order to create a fraction, we use that fact that we just mentioned. We can take any whole number. We can put it over top of a 1. There's a fraction. Now, keep, change, flip. We want to keep the first fraction the same. We want to change the division to multiplication. And we want to flip the second fraction upside down. And now we have a multiplication problem, so we multiply straight across. 
Up on top, 18 times one, down on the bottom, five times two. And we've got two goes into two once, two goes into 18 nine times, so that we would have up on top a nine times one, and down on the bottom, a five times one, giving us a final fraction answer of nine fifths, nine over five. Again, that is the best fraction answer we can come up with. We are not worried at the moment about any sort of mixed number answer. Five over 12 divided by 25 over 36. Keep, change, flip. Keep the first fraction. Change the division and multiplication. Flip the second fraction. Now we've got a multiplication problem, so multiply straight across. And look for things that we can slash out. Well, we have a five on top. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 25, 5 times. We have a 12 on the bottom that will actually work immediately with the 36. 12 goes into 12 once, 12 goes into 36, 3 times. So that what we seem to have now is 1 times 3 on top, and one times five on the bottom for a final answer of three fifths.